All right, we're live. And uh, All right. here with Professor Jason Rank from Penn State University, um, who is going to tell us a little bit about some exciting stuff that's been happening recently with the most mysterious star in the yeah. universe, Debbie Star. Um, maybe you can just lead us off, uh, Jason, telling us what's exciting um, that's happening right now. Sure. Well, it's kind of a weird coincidence that I'm here in the Breakthrough Listen Lab at UC Berkeley uh, when all of this started happening. So, um, uh, so Tabby Star, as you may know, went through a lot of uh, very strange dimming events. It got up to 22% dimmer during the Kepler mission. And since then, we've been eagerly awaiting another dip. And the reason that we've been waiting for that is that uh, whatever's causing the star to get dimmer, will leave a spectral fingerprint behind. So if it's a lot of dust between us and the star that's passing by, uh, it should block more blue light than red light. If there's gas in that dust, that gas should absorb very specific wavelengths, uh, and we should be able to see that. Um, and so we've been eager to see one of these changes, one of these dips of the star, so that we can uh, take some spectra. So all week there have been some indications that uh, something might be up, and uh, yesterday we were on yellow alert. Um, there was evidence from Fairborn Observatory uh, in Arizona. Uh, Matt Peters let us know that they were they were seeing what looked like some um, some dimming events, but they, nothing was significant enough for us to really hit the big red button and get everybody on red alert to start taking spectra when this happens. One of the difficulties here is that most telescopes are scheduled weeks, months uh, in advance. And so we can't just jump on a telescope and take a spectrum typically. Um, and so uh, we need to have a network of people around the world that are ready, ready to jump on. And, and fortunately, um, Tavik Star is not too uh, faint. And so uh, there are a lot of observers on telescopes around the world tonight, actually that have graciously agreed to take some time out of their science to figure out what the spectrum for us. Uh, anyway, so the punchline is that uh, yesterday we were sort of on yellow alert waiting for uh, data to come in uh, to tell us that the dip was really happening. And uh, sure enough, at about 4 a.m. Uh, this morning, I got a phone call from Tabby that, uh, that Fairborn Observatory in Arizona had confirmed uh, that the star was 3% dimmer than it normally is. And that is enough that we are absolutely confident that this is no statistical fluke. We've now got it confirmed at multiple observatories, I think, that the star is indeed. So I guess I can show these data. Steve, do you want to put one of those up? Sure. Uh, which one do you want? Uh, okay, I don't know if this is coming through. Is there a way to zoom that in or project this in some way? Uh, I can see if I can share this on yeah. here, yeah. Uh, All right, well, Steve, we'll, we'll see if we can get the data shown so you can see exactly what this looks like. Because um, I don't think it's coming through on the webcam <laughs> right now. Um, uh, the, the punchline is that it's been more or less stable in brightness for as long as we've been measuring it. Um, there's some indications that maybe it's been slowly getting dimmer. That's the other, the other strange thing that this star has been doing is it's been very slowly getting dimmer over many years. And uh, we've been accumulating evidence that that may be continuing to today. But just in the last two days, it got dramatically suddenly by about uh, now, as of this morning at 4 a.m. Pacific, uh, about 3% dimmer. And so we are officially on alert, and we are asking astronomers on telescopes, uh, including amateurs with the American Association of Variable Star Observers, and uh, all the way to the spectroscopists on the Keck Twin 10-meter telescopes tonight to please uh, take spectra of the star, multi spectrometry of the star. We want to do everything we can to understand uh, how the dimming is different at different wavelengths because, uh, as an astronomer will tell you, the key to understand what something's made of is to get a spectrum of it. And now we are able to get a transmission spectrum of whatever is blocking uh, light. Um, I think that's everything we've got right now. We're organizing uh, lots of different telescopes. We have observers on the um, uh, both Keck telescopes. Uh, we have an observer who's offered us some time on the MMT in Arizona. Uh, we're going. Uh, we have a team member that's trying to get uh, infrared observations at the Large Binocular Telescope in Arizona. 
Uh, we're going to try to use the Minerva Telescope Array in Arizona. I'm going to trigger, as soon as I get around to it, uh, some uh, more spectra at the Hobby Everly Telescope uh, tonight. Uh, and um, uh, I know I'm missing a whole bunch of things that we're all trying to get done. Um, but uh, it's been kind of a crazy, uh, crazy last uh, 18 hours. And uh, it'll be a really exciting weekend. Uh, so, Steve, uh, is this one up? Not quite yet. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else can I say uh, before we get to the questions? So, Steve is uh, frantically working here to try and show you the data so that you can see what the, uh, uh, what we're talking about when we say that it's getting dimmer. Um, uh, Oh, so where am I exactly? I see a question on one of our, our channels. Yeah, yeah, this is up, actually. This, this is up. Yeah. Okay, great. So here is the, um, uh, this is the light curve from, um, uh, this is Fairborn Observatory. Uh, Matt Uterspasser has this plot recently. Uh, and it shows uh, all the red points for most of this are uh, just essentially the star being more or less the same brightness. The green points around 5786 to 57880. Uh, were the first hint something wonky might be going on. There was that cluster that was a little lower than usual. Um, and so we started getting very interested. And then uh, the blue points uh, are uh, what Matt has labeled event two. And you can see that they are significantly lower. One of those points is very low error bars, so it's highly statistically significant. Uh, and so the fact that all of those went down, those are the observations uh, that had us push the big red button.